Join me today as we talk about some common carnivore diet myths. If you're interested in the diet, but you're just a little nervous because of what you've been hearing about it, or if you're already carnivore and you're just annoyed at all the silly things you keep hearing, then this may be just the video for you. We're going to take all the common myths and see if we can finally dispel them once and for all. By the way, I'm Jen. If you're new here, I am delighted to meet you. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I've experienced radical healing on a carnivore diet and I would love to help you do the same by adjusting your diet as well. And that's my dog Lucy. She likes to peek in and out of here during these videos. The first myth is the carnivore diet is not sustainable. I don't know what the definition of sustainable is to you, but for me, no diet I ever did before the carnivore diet was sustainable. I could not stay on it for more than a couple weeks or maybe a couple of months. I've now been carnivore for just about a year and a half. And I know that that may not be long enough for some people to be convinced, but there are many, many more people who have been on this much longer than me and are still thriving. Kelly Hogan and Lisa Wiedemann are two examples. They've both been on the carnivore diet for over 10 years, pushing 20 really. And there are many, many more who've been eating this way for decades longer before it even had a name. So to me, it automatically tells me it's sustainable. The reason why it's sustainable is because it's a very nutrient dense diet. When you eat only animal products, your body gets all the vitamins and minerals that it needs. In fact, I made this nutrient density chart, which shows the nutrient density of animal foods versus plant foods like kale and broccoli, apples and blueberry. And over here, we've got all the different nutrients that we're looking at. The blue, the dark blue and light blue boxes tell you which food is the first and second most nutrient dense in that nutrient. And you can see that the majority of the blue boxes are over here on the meat side. If this table interests you, it is available for a small fee on my website, delightedtomeetyou.com. There's also a lot of free stuff over there if you're like, dang, this girl greedy. The next myth, and honestly, probably the most common one, is that the carnivore diet will cause you to have a heart attack or a stroke. Oh lordy, this is a big one. I'm sure it's never going away. And I've made several videos on my channel about this, so you're welcome to go back and watch some of those if you want some in-depth information. But today we'll keep it short and sweet. Believe it or not, the evidence that's available has not consistently shown a correlation between high total cholesterol or even high LDL and heart attacks or strokes. And there's definitely no data indicating a strong causation between those factors. Yes, LDL matters, but here's the thing. The number of LDL particles you have is not what matters. It's whether or not those LDL particles have been damaged. When they're damaged, they become small, dense particles that can build up and create atherosclerotic plaques in your blood vessels. When they're not damaged, they're large and buoyant and fluffy particles that do lots of good things for you and really no bad things. And the way that LDL particles become damaged is by being exposed to glucose. So the sugar is the problem. The carbs are the problem, not the fat, even saturated fat. The research does consistently show that high HDL and low triglycerides make you less likely to have a stroke or a heart attack. And both of those things are resultant of the carnivore diet. So frankly, a carnivore diet, if anything, is going to make you less likely to have a heart attack or stroke. Our third myth today is that the carnivore diet is going to cause gout. You know what actually causes gout? Inflammation. Fructose has been shown to lead to gout. High insulin levels. Being overweight and obese. Those are some of the top four things that lead to gout attacks. So if you don't want to have gout, one thing you can do is avoid high levels of fructose, especially fruit juices and sweetened drinks with high fructose corn syrup. You also want to avoid anything inflammatory. So specifically industrial seed oils, they are very, very inflammatory and can definitely create gout issues. Eating a low carb diet like a carnivore diet is going to decrease your inflammation. It's going to generally lead to weight loss and it's gonna keep your insulin levels low. This way of eating prevents gout. It definitely does not cause gout. Myth number four is that the carnivore diet is just too expensive. Sure, if you're comparing meal to meal, the carnivore diet does seem more expensive. A juicy, delicious ribeye is going to cost you more than a box of Kraft macaroni. However, there are lots of flaws when you look at it this way. One flaw is that when you're eating these cheap, usually processed foods, you almost never are eating them in exclusivity. For example, if you're trying to eat a well-balanced, healthy diet, you're probably eating your macaroni with some broccoli and maybe some kind of meat. All of those sides, the cost adds up. Not to mention when you're eating these highly processed, carby foods, your glucose and insulin are gonna go up 
and then they're going to come down and you're going to be craving food again, especially carbs within a couple of hours. So most people on that kind of a diet are consistently eating throughout the day to keep their hunger pangs at bay. Carnivores don't do that. Most carnivores eat two to three times a day and snacking, if it occurs at all, is minimal. So think about all the things that you spend money on, on a diet that is not a carnivore diet. You may be spending money on Starbucks, alcohol, eating out a lot, maybe even healthy things like organic fruits and vegetables. That stuff is expensive. I know that for myself personally, when I was a binge eater, I could easily spend $30 just loading up for a binge. I could spend that in 30 minutes by going through a drive through or two and stopping at the grocery store and filling up on all the pastries and ice cream that I wanted. I very rarely spend that much in a whole day now that I'm a carnivore. Not to mention the money that I save on prescription drugs and doctor visits. Quite honestly, the carnivore diet can actually be cheaper than a more mainstream diet. Myth number five, eating fat makes you fat. I know, I know. Fat has been demonized for the last five decades or so to the point that pretty much all of us, including myself, really struggle to believe that fat can be healthy. Well, I've gotten over that now, but maybe you're still struggling. This is a bit of an unpopular opinion, but I would agree that eating too much fat will make you fat. However, here's the caveat. I think that eating too much of anything is going to make you fat. If you get excess calories in food, it's gotta be stored in some way, and that ultimately becomes fat storage on your body. There is actually one exception to this, and that's alcohol. Your body has no way of storing alcohol. It has to detoxify it immediately. So if you have alcohol in your system, anything else that you've ingested, whether that's carbs, fat, or protein, if it can't be metabolized in time, it's going to be stored as fat. I think most people would agree that your body needs protein. It needs it for building muscle and repairing tissue. The other thing that gets a little muddier is that your body also needs either carbs or fat for energy. It can use either one. Those two macronutrients go through different processes to become energy, but they can both become energy. Fat though is needed. You must have fat to absorb fat soluble vitamins. Carbohydrates are the only macronutrient that you could live without for months, years, an entire lifetime and still be a well-developed, fully functioning adult human. Myth number six is actually a little bit of a carryover and it's that you will not have any energy if you don't eat carbs. Like I just said a moment ago, your body can use fat or carbs for energy. If you don't eat either of those, you won't have energy. I've actually experienced this firsthand a little bit myself. At one point during my carnivore diet, I decreased my fat a little bit too much and I felt okay for about a week and then my energy just completely plummeted. I will not be doing that again. There is some research out there on this topic. In the caption, I'll link an article that compares middle distance runners on a low carb, high fat diet versus a low fat, high carb diet. Per that study, the low carb dieters had just as much energy and stamina and performance with their running as did the high carb dieters. It did take them about two or three weeks to accommodate to a new fuel source, but they got there and then their performance was just as good as it was before. Myth number seven is the most annoying one in my opinion, and it is that the carnivore diet is just another form of disordered eating. Many people that eat this way and are thriving actually had real eating disorders before discovering the carnivore diet. I'm one of those people. I spent 20 plus years as a pretty bad binge eater. Many others experienced anorexia or bulimia. Those eating disorders are detrimental physically, mentally, and emotionally. And one of the biggest problems is that they prevent your body from getting the nutrients that it needs and the amount of food that it needs. The carnivore diet, on the other hand, even though you are excluding whole food groups, still provides adequate amounts of nutrients that your body needs. So no, it is not a form of disordered eating. It is simply a way of getting only what you need and nothing else. I actually think it's quite comparable to what's called a capsule wardrobe. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's when you get rid of most of your clothing and you keep maybe 20 key pieces, maybe three skirts, two pairs of pants, five shirts, three pairs of shoes, and one workout outfit. There are many reasons people choose to have a capsule wardrobe, but some of them include cutting down on the clutter, saving money, having only clothing that fits you perfectly and that you really love, and to cut down on decision fatigue. It's kind of similar when you do the same sort of minimalism with your diet. In my experience, I'm basically only eating foods that I actually love and that are good for me every single time. That doesn't seem very disordered to me. Myth number eight, you'll get scurvy. First of all, when's the last time you saw someone with scurvy? In case you're not fully aware, some signs and symptoms of scurvy are fatigue, weakness, bleeding gums, and excessive bruising. And scurvy occurs when your vitamin C levels are too low. 
It's true. There is not a whole lot of vitamin C in a carnivore diet. It's basically one of the only nutrients that's found mostly in plants. What's interesting is that there are hundreds, actually thousands of carnivores out there, and I'm not saying no one has ever had scurvy ever, but it sure does not seem to be a common finding. A reasonable explanation for why is that vitamin C and glucose compete for transport in your body, and so if you're not having any carbs, any glucose, then you can use up all the vitamin C that you take in, and it does not have to compete, and you actually get to use it all. So vitamin C requirements in people that don't eat carbs are much, much lower. Myth number nine, when you only eat meat, the food rots in your stomach, and it also gives you really stinky gas. First of all, here's a fun fact. Carnivores almost never fart. I am not kidding you. I would say the frequency is no more than 10% as much as on a normal diet. So bloating and gas are absolutely not an issue on a carnivore diet. In fact, that's one of the main things that people experience relief from when changing their diet this way. As far as the food rotting in your stomach, that's very comparable to saying if you chew gum and swallow it, it's going to stay in your stomach for seven years or it's going to stick your insides together or something else silly like that. I suppose really simple carbs like white rice can maybe move through your digestive system slightly more quickly, but even meat, even really fatty meat, still moves from your stomach to your small intestine within a couple of hours. It definitely does not rot in your stomach, and it certainly doesn't make you gassy or bloated, as I stated just a moment ago. If anything rots in your stomach, it's fiber. The definition of fiber is that it's insoluble and we can't break it down. That's weird, right? If the idea that we need to eat something that we truly cannot digest just so it can build up enough to push out some poop, if that seems crazy to you, you are not alone. We might as well be eating sawdust. Seriously. The final myth of the day is related to that last one. It is that you will be constipated on a carnivore diet. On the topic of fiber, it is commonly believed that fiber is necessary for normal, regular bowel movements. I actually have a study right here stating otherwise. The title of the study is Stopping or Reducing Dietary Fiber Intake Reduces Constipation and Its Associated Symptoms. Check it out if you're interested. I'll link it in the caption. I can speak for myself when I say that my bowel habits were way worse before I was a carnivore than they are now. It was very common for me to go five, seven, maybe more days without a bowel movement. And when I did go, it was hard and painful and dry and not good. At one point, my doctor actually made me get a colonoscopy in my early to mid 30s just to make sure nothing was wrong because I was pooping so infrequently. Of course, everyone suggested that I increase my fiber intake, and so I did, and I swear to God that only made it worse. According to that article I just showed you, that is not uncommon. Now that I only eat animal products, that is not an issue. My bowel habits are much more regular and definitely much more comfortable than they ever were before. It turns out that fiber is not what's necessary for bowel movements. The amount of fat that you eat is what you need to pay attention to. If your stools are a little on the dry, hard side, increase fat intake. If they're too loose, decrease fat a little bit. It's literally as simple as that. If you've stuck around for all 10 of these carnivore myths, thank you so much. You are my people. I'm so happy you're here. Aww. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you think about any of these 10 myths or any other myths you've been hearing. If you'd like to connect even more, find me on Instagram.